weekend today? Are you celebrating your magic? Always. Okay, you're, you're trying to contain yourself, are you? Always. <laughs> well, I, I suggest you shift that. I know. That's why I come to see you all the time. You okay, might great. Be out and about. Well, 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 yeah. I mean, I was pondering like what I was going to talk about today. And I just really want to thank you for coming in. What I realized oh. is that we are um, always challenged, especially in the last couple of years, more than ever, to keep our vibration high, to keep focused on our incredible things that we want to create. And, you know, it takes, it seems like it's taking a lot more work. I don't know if I'm alone, but it, it really does take a concerted effort for us to keep our vibration high and start to choose consciously who we're going to surround ourselves with. Well, actually, I had a question for you that kind of ties into that theme. Okay. If you're looking for topics to discuss. Well, so, yeah, let's talk about it. So I was, um, I was thinking about the conversation you and I had yesterday about, right, what's different and how, how do people do things differently or how am I doing things differently? And I have noticed this pattern. I have a friend who I used to work with in my previous role that was grading on me. And we've both since left that agency, but it's very interesting because I'll have these conversations with him and I'll go, you know, what I really want to do is go do research somewhere and get paid to do research and write all day. And then a couple of days later, there's a posting for director of research. You know, it's, it's like these funny little things where I know that I'm the one doing the creation, but what's, what, what I've noticed that's very interesting to me is this pattern of, if I say it to this friend of mine, there seems to be more stuff that comes with it. Resistance. Yeah. Resistance. No, 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 less resistance. Like, it seems like I'll oh. say it, and then it just sort of like, it, it's almost like I have a manifesting partner, but not really, because it's all me. But it's like, it's almost like it, it sort of reflects back and amplifies okay, or something. Okay, so, I don't know what the term is. I'm sorry. I'm really so, but bad. this, this is a person you had a positive relationship with, not Correct. the people that you didn't have a good relationship. Correct. So Correct. there was synergy and a um, uh, um, yes camaraderie of seeing your greatness. He could see the greatness in you and he held you accountable to it and kept the vision for you. Isn't that interesting though? I think that's interesting, this pattern. And so I thought that might be something because I may not be the only one that's having that or maybe people- well, Absolutely. Or, and so absolutely. I thought that that would be a topic for you it's, to discuss. It's a, great, it's a great conversation. In fact, what I noticed, and that's one of the reasons why I was prompted to create this space because sharing our wins and sharing the things that we're celebrating is, it, you know, these days it seems like when we do share that with other people, they're jealous or they go into competition yes. or they're secretly going in their head. Well, you know, that's great for her, but what about me? You know, my life is shitty. I've got this horrible husband or I can't travel or, you know, Amir is going to Egypt and I can't, I want to go or, you know, whatever the, the, the story is that is going through someone's mind, it's creating an energy, a vibration of competition. And what that does is that sends a vibration out to us that creates resistance for us to create it. Okay, so are you so recording? I, so we can capture this for everyone? Oh yeah, it's all, it's all recorded, yeah. Okay. Thank you. And so what it is, is, you know, we have to be selective and choose the groups and the environment that we share our wins with and or our goals with. It has to be somebody that can equally, you know, applaud us and be happy for us and hold a vibration, the vision. It's holding a vision, the possibility. Yeah, you can do that. Sure, you can do that, Rebecca. I know it. I know it. You know, in your head, you're going, I don't know about that. That's so scary. That's such a big goal. I don't know. It's very interesting because usually I do not, uh, you know, share goals with other people. Usually I just sort of keep to myself because okay. of what you're talking about, because and, people and get really weird. And so I usually just sort of do it. And you remember I told you, uh, you know, this connections thing. So it was very, it's just very interesting um, when I noticed that. And um, it, it just kind of cracked me up. I was like, oh, 
That's a very well, funny, interesting pattern. And I thought I should share that with you. And I, like think, I, it, I think that's wonderful. One, that you observed it in yourself and that you are re recognizing you're intuitively doing it. You know, you're being guided to, all of us are being guided into community, I think more and more. I mean, I can, I'll, I'll admit it. I'm very secretive. There's a real aspect to me of keeping my business to myself and coming out here and being with you all is kind of, you know, it's, it's been challenging for me. You know, I, I love doing it. Don't get me wrong, but it's not something that I want to do. That's not the first thing. I'm not a Leo. No, <laughs> or I'm, I just come out and stage and want to show off and dance and do my funny you said that. My, my husband just walked by and he's a Leo. He, and I've got to go close my door, but it's so funny that you said that. That's yeah. Funny. Yeah. My, I have a sister that's a Leo, you know, God bless him. Yeah. Looks like hubby wants some attention, huh? <laughs> Isn't that funny how we get distracted from having what we want? <laughs> I don't know what happened to you, Rebecca, but you're not here and you're muted. I'm here. I was going to close the door, but then, uh, then my husband came by and then the dogs came in. And so he closed the door. And now they're of course doing this. I always like my door closed when I'm working and stuff. I have, I, so, I guess that's part of my needing my own space, you know? Well, yes. And it also has to do with what are we creating and how are we being sabotaged and what energies are coming in and just, just derailing us, distracting us, keeping us away. And, you know, people like that, I'm not saying he is, but it's an example right now of how people invade our life and our space and take us away from our goal. And that's why I like my door closed when I'm working and doing things. And like, he just came by and he heard us talking about Leo's and he goes, I'm not secretive at all. And I started laughing and I said, well, that's what we were just discussing. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. And, and there was something else that we were talking about. So the other thing is sharing your goals and your dreams with a very select. And even if you're really, let's say close to your sister and you really trust them your entire life, she may not be the person that you want to share your next big, incredible thing. Right. And so selectively choosing, because here's what happens when we just blab everybody's on social media and they're just putting everything out there, all their business. What's really happening is there is all those people looking at that post and they're going into competition with you and they're throwing that unconscious energy towards you. So until you build that thing or you've got some momentum and some traction for that, you know, creation. I keep it to myself because it's like putting little pinpricks in your balloon and it literally starts to deflate the dream. And then you start well, like, well, that is a stupid idea. Like my story about the Lexus that I shared. Yeah, that's not practical. Yeah, it's not very good. You know, it's a stupid, you know, it's a luxury car. I don't need that, you know. And I when I after I manifested the Lexus, I kept that car for 10 years. It's a great car. And I, and, and see there again, it's our feelings. And so I wanted to talk about, you know, how we show up for our goals. So you were, um, when you started talking about the research position, you didn't have an energy. Siri's talking to us too. Siri, see, Siri's picking up. <laughs> Siri wants to manifest some things Siri, going on. Siri wants to get her attention in here, you know, have her voice heard. <laughs> you know how would I feel if things were different like if we want to manifest so you're on track for let's say that career and I'm not even sure that that was your one incredible thing a career step but let's say it's um, a relationship or money in the bank or um, something that yeah money is a, is, a, is a hot one because a lot of people have there's so much energy on money and what we fail to realize it has nothing to do with the actual money replace it with how would I feel if I had the experience that I need the money to purchase, right? Or the money is my exchange vehicle. So how would I feel different? And, and really, like, you got so excited. You look like a different person because you're yeah. building this idea of I get to do something I love. I get to do something. Your face is completely different. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I just love that. You're just glowing. And there again, you know, it's validation that you can do it. And the universe is responding back. Why? Because you're actually 
not putting up the resistance to it. You have this vibration, an energy of not resisting it, sort of nonchalant. So that was also one of the reasons that I said to you, I don't have to know what it is to manifest it. And the, the first took the pressure off yourself. I think the first week or right before the first week, right before we started the manifest challenge, when I signed up for it, I was kind of like, well, what do I want to manifest? What do I want to manifest? And I felt a lot of pressure about that. And then I, I remembered like in one of my very early sessions with you, you said, we don't have to know what the problem, what the, what the energy block is to clear it. And I thought, well, if I don't have to know what the block is to clear it, I don't have to know what the incredible thing is to manifest it. So I'm just going to take this pressure off myself. And I'm just going to say, okay, I'm manifesting this one incredible thing. No idea what it is. If for all I know, it is that career step for all I know, it's something else. I don't right. care. I just love the things that are showing up. Because if you remember when I started with you, I was having such a hard time you know, manifesting anything that this is so nice to see things like, right, coming up, you know, right. And so you're probably, you know, what, what you're showing me is you're not even trusting the vision you had. Well, because you've had so many disappointments in your life, and you haven't built a level of trust that you can actually do this, or you are doing this. And this is you, this isn't fluke now, because you've had a consistent stream of manifesting. So now it's It's showing up. It's like building a muscle. You're building confidence and what I call certainty. And what does that do? Is it, it's another word for confidence. I know I'm going to manifest it. So now relax, pull back. Don't work so hard on, okay, I got to do this and make sure this is done. You know, there's a certain element of letting go And that's why we're doing the practices we are, because we're moving that unconscious energy to just create space. It's like parting the waters so that you can walk across, you know, the gap and, and there it is. And I think people don't realize that about letting go. A lot of people in my experience, they think letting go is this very passive act, but I think it's a very powerful and active act that people really, for whatever reason, um, they they don't give it its due you know when it, not that it necessarily takes a lot of effort in the same way it would take an effort to like move a mountain but it does take a certain amount of effort to just go okay that's not serving me that can go or i don't have to know what this thing is it's very it's been very um interesting for me to sit back and go i don't have to know what this is to manifest it because i'm kind of a control freak as you probably have picked up on over the years And I like to know, and I like to be like, wow, you know, and I've had to sort of this time around, I was like, well, I'm just going to, I'm just going to sit here and just go, okay, whatever it is, it's coming in, it is coming in. And like you said, right, to, to let go and do that, I think people don't really value that. They just kind of go, oh, you know, you let it go. It takes a lot to do that for people. Well, and, you know, you've got a well-trained analyzer as a researcher (laughs) and a PhD. And so it's like untraining yourself in some ways, learning how to let go another aspect of yourself, right? And at the same time of letting go, you're actually taking action in a momentum or in a direction that makes you, that is a towards your goal and, or, or just loving yourself, right? Supporting yourself. And I think, I think a lot of times all all the exercises we're doing is helping you to create that space so you can take those steps closer to yourself. Yeah. And I think a lot of people like, you know, Albert Einstein supposedly said that if it's, if we wouldn't call it research, if we knew what we were doing and, you know, we don't really think about research in that context, right? We think about research in terms of have to analyze these things. But it really is, right? We don't know what we're doing when we start looking at things. And that's, that's why it's research, right? Because we're, we're learning, we're, we're kind of looking at how does this work or how is this put together? Yeah, our curious um, self wants to explore how things work. And, but you know, I think in what we're doing here, we're refining our connection with our higher self. Our mm-hmm. higher self, call it the soul and God, you know, because I think there's an element of you connecting with your higher self and God and having a strong relationship with God that actually directs you to take the right steps. Well, I don't know why I did that today. 
like there's a they have ghost tours here in Georgetown and I thought oh how curious maybe I'd like to talk to people that are interested in the paranormal and and, and exploring some you know as a fun little project so I called this gal up that does the ghost tours and she was in a real funky energy space and uh, this so happens that she used to do these paranormal investigations of haunted houses all over the country. And she worked for, I, I think, I don't think it was the History Channel, but some large production. So she was well versed in all of that. So anyway, she was in her funky space and I didn't know that. She sort of gave me the parameters of the coat of the her program. And I just like, oh, OK, well, maybe I'll go and, you know, to take the tour one day. She called me the next day because she couldn't get me out of her head because unbeknownst to me, she's looking for a mentor and she's looking for a way to develop these aspects to herself. All right, there you go. Like I said yesterday, right? The, the teacher will appear when the student is yeah. ready. And, and so we have this wonderful lunch together and talking about it. But it was so interesting, the parallels, but she was listening to her higher self. So she pivoted. I don't, she goes, I don't know why you called me Amira. You know what I mean? I called her. I didn't even know exactly why I was calling, but I followed the nudge, right? We never know where that's going to take us. So staying grounded, staying present, not being frazzled, not being like when we're going after a goal or taking a step towards manifesting or like moving some of the things of the list off of you making a list of things to do and you're like I've really got to do these one two and three because I'm not going to feel good about myself and then I'm not able to completely relax if I unless I do these three things today right so you check your list you do that and then you if you're resisting something mean trying so hard it's like you've got to pull back the energy and then shift or pivot a lot of people tell me Oh, well, I tried so many times and I guess God doesn't want me to have that. Uh, well, it might not mean that God's closing the doors, but you just have to shift your perspective. How are you approaching it? Right. And I, you know, and that's why, like, so one of one of the things that I've, I've learned about myself, right, is that this this need to know is partly what was holding me back. And so if I just go, OK, I'm, I'm whatever is coming in is coming in right then a lot of a lot of those things that were holding a lot of those blocks a lot of that resistance doesn't show up partly because i don't know what i'm doing like i'm doing it but i don't necessarily know what i'm doing and so i don't feel this like oh well i can't make 50,000 a month or whatever like all of that all of that resistance doesn't doesn't manifest itself you know um yeah, because it, the resistance shows up, well, that's a crazy idea, or nobody ever, I don't know anybody that makes 50000 a year, or um, my family uh, has this belief system that, you know, we've got to be scared. Or everybody, everybody wants to be rich, but everybody hates rich people if you go out and ask them, and you know, right, all of yeah, those sorts of evil things. people, yeah, but what that does is it allows you to do more for other people, and that's right. my perspective of it. And um, yeah, and, and, and there's something else that needs to be said here is on that note is giving back to other people. A lot of times people go, well, I, I don't have anything to give or I can't, but there is something to give. You can give um, a comment, you know, a positive comment or how you experienced a video that inspired you. That might not be giving directly to the person. It might be inspiring someone else that you don't even know that's coming. So there's an energy of giving. The more we raise that vibration of wanting to give and, and share and be present, the more the universe responds to that vibration. Yes. And I, I think also people get wrapped up in, um, you know, when so when I was an undergrad, there was a student that came up to our dean. We were building a new science center. And he came up and he started asking questions about the building. And our dean very calmly responded to him. And he said, you build the building to fit your program. You don't build your program to fit your building. And I think a lot of people get kind of wrapped up in the, oh, well, I need to manifest, you know, I need to manifest $10,000 today. And it's not necessarily that you man need to manifest $10,000 today, right? You need to manifest enough today so that then you can have that energy to give back or to do other things. But I think sometimes we get in our own way 
with this like, oh, I've built this construct and it's not necessarily about the construct you've built, it's it's something else. So I'm so this is one of the things I'm trying to be different. I'm trying to just kind of Right. Well, you know, and all the gurus and coaches and trainers, they talk to you about building your perfect product, right? Building mm-hmm. the perfect program. And I think entrepreneurs fall into this um, landmine. It's, you know, it's quicksand because they build this great thing. They spent months doing it and they launch it and it's a flop versus doing something organically and being surprised like, oh my gosh, I never thought that it was going to take this direction. A few times because right, that's what they tell you, right? You have to put your little package together and right. you know, and I and I, I have done that and flopped on it and been like, oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, now I'm just kind we, of in we, we think that what we're thinking is what everybody wants or needs, and it's quite the opposite. And and here again, you know, I know that for myself needing a shift, I needed to just find out what people really need. And it was just support. It's support. We, you know, we we go around. We're not receiving the real support. Correct. Yep. And we keep ourselves detached. I I'm guilty of that. You know, and insulated, and feeling like somebody's just going to pounce on me, and they want something from me. So you know, how can I support you, and um, and make things better for you? Is is the whole goal. Mm-hmm. And so I thought that would be a great topic for our discussion because I thought yeah, you're doing great. You know, as, as I was looking at my own life, I was like, you know, this is really interesting that one of the things that I used to do was just kind of be by myself or, or be with you or run my tools or do my own thing. And I didn't really talk to people about what I was trying to do. And now that I say, you know, to people, not very many, really one, but now that I say, you know, hey, I would really like to do this all of a sudden things have been showing up. Again, it's the importance of who you shared it with. Um, Because I'm sure you've got people in your life where you've shared things with and they're just, they just poo poo it. You know, we talked about that before. And so that's the the key, Rebecca, is that you um, carefully aligned yourself and it took time to trust this person. You didn't just blindly open your door and your mouth and share with just anybody you were selective in who you shared it with. Because I've seen people, people have called me and just got whacked. I call it whacked. It's it's an energetic attack, right? From somebody. And uh, I've got a sister that's really good at that. (laughs) And you know, I think I grew up in that family continually getting whacked. It's like your ideas are stupid or that'll never happen. Meanwhile, she was in the back room trying to do what I just said, you know? That goes, back to what I, that goes back to what I said to you yesterday, right? About learning very young that being yourself is a bad idea. Or in the case of yesterday's conversation, being myself was the right. Because it's like, well, why would you do that? Or, or, you know, we don't do that in this house or, you know, whatever it is, right? Yes. That's- or in that scarcity mindset of, oh, you know, who do you think you are? I remember my father, I used to make my own clothes. And it's funny, you know, growing up in, in Edmonton, Canada, it wasn't exactly a booming metropolis, but yet I had sort of an idea in my head that I was a, a Parisian, um, you know, super, not a model, but super couture. I had this mind, I just always appreciated finely refined clothes. So I would make these really beautiful clothes. And my dad would say to me, you know, who do you think you are? And so, you know, was it a past life or something that was reflecting? Because I had no reference point to Paris or dreams of it. I didn't know anything about it. The point is we get squashed, right? And we stop following something that really gets us excited or that really helps us flourish and feel good about ourselves. And, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, my creativity was always being snuffed out. And, uh, you know, it's like, I think it just survived just by the f- mere uh, fact that that was my savior. You know, that was when I get depressed or down, I go and do some art or I do something that was meditative, right? Moving that energy out. And I always feel like, who do these other people think they are? Like, who, yeah, who does my dad think he was? <laughs> To, to squash you, you know, and it's, and it's funny because I had a friend in college who used to say to me, when people try to make you feel small, you should go really big and own the room. 
And I used to look at him and I used to go, oh, that's crazy. Because, you know, I don't like to be seen. So I used to sit there and I used to be like, that is crazy. But, you know, I have found when I've been in meetings or when I've been in other things that that who do you think you are, Rebecca, that blah, blah, blah. And then if I turn around and I go, well, who do you think you are? That's ridiculous. And you'd be mistaken. And all of this, like you were talking about yesterday about being in one's personal power, right? Mm -hmm. Then it sort of rattles them. Because it, it's like people like to, I think, put you in a box and conform you. And so like, if you turn around and, you know, you can't do it when you're a child, sadly, but, you know, if you turn around and you go, well, who do you think you are? You know, it sort of puts them off balance and they sort of, they sort of look and it's like, oh, who do I think I am? Like, it's, it's very interesting. It's just very interesting. Well, you're, you're helping me re recall, of, uh, I had a conversation with Wendy. She was uh, finished my mastery training and um, she, you know, it's a sense of power. And it's not like I'm conquering someone, but it's, uh, you can intersperse that maybe with confidence. Mm -hmm. I'm clear about who I am. I'm grounded. And when you have a clear sense, then you're able to articulate your feelings in a way that becomes non-threatening, right? So Wendy and I were speaking, and what she said was that she noticed she was always somebody that hid. She was very, very sensitive and emotional. And so she would, you know, working at home has been her godsend, you know, a savior for her. And she would just try to exclude herself from the environment. And she was saying, you know, typically at the family gatherings, she had a sister that would continually ridicule her, constantly putting down her son. And so there they were at a family gathering. And after she had finished the training, she actually said to her, you know, everybody was there and she goes, well, actually that's not right. That's not correct. What really happened was, and this is how it is, and everybody shut up. And in fact, a couple people even piped up. Yeah, you know, that's true. That is true. And her sister just completely recoiled. And of course, you know, probably till still today, she's licking her wounds. That might have tripped another, flipped us another switch, but she stood in her power and it felt good. She didn't threaten her sister. She didn't attack her sister. She spoke up for what was true in a grounded, unemotional, detached manner. It was matter of fact, that's what's owning your power. Yeah, I had this, I had a similar thing with my brother once and he said, he, he thinks I'm a loser because I live with my father-in-law and you know my husband takes care of my father-in-law and all of this and so my brother he says to me well you're you're a loser and I looked at my phone and I went well that's doctor loser to you <laughs> I'm not interested you know and and it was so funny because he just sort of stopped and I'm like okay like that's fine but yeah. doctor loser to you you know um, <laughs> good for you I love that <laughs> I want to also mention what I'm looking at here is I'm seeing that people go, yeah, fill, go in like your professor, I think it was, you said, said, go into a room and fill it up. Now for an empath, um, for somebody that's very sensitive by you filling up the room with your energy field is, um, is different. And what happens is you end up taking home everybody else's feelings and all their crap. So energetically speaking, there's a way of learning how to be in your power. Your aura is arm's length around your physical body. That's why we're practicing in the meditations, bringing it in, grounding, because you can be in that presence and be in that strength, but not everybody's jumping in it because then you lose focus, you lose confidence, you lose your direction and and everybody takes advantage of you, you and it's a lot better and it's a lot better than it used to be it used to be like when I was in my 20s if I passed you on the street I'd get all sorts of stuff off your energy and I didn't know that at the time because right, I didn't, right I didn't understand you just get home and you're like oh gosh right I didn't I didn't understand a lot of things so I didn't know that's what it was but I would I would get stuff off of people about what was going on or whatever it was off of their off their energy right and then that's exactly I would get home and I would be like you know and I still yeah. find people draining but it's it's a totally different experience um and it was it's completely bizarre and I think I had I had mentioned that to you at one point too that I, I would like I would walk down the street and I was like oh what is this 
I don't know if I was filling up the street with the energy field or well, when your aura is too far out and you want to be seen like that's the mistake a lot of people do is they're building their confidence or they want to be seen they we want validation we want to be loved every single human being wants to be loved and so unknowingly we've never been taught how to manage that that frequency that surrounds our body and more or less more importantly is how to clear it because you know born into this world we're accumulating energies we continue going on we come to puberty we start rebelling and unconsciously we're trying to push away all these foreign energies that aren't us and so it's that learning to refine it and come back remembering who we are so that we can be in that power connected to our soul our gps god Having that complete alignment is where we we activate that power and that purpose and a heart filled with gratitude, right? Then we know who we are and we're grateful because we're plugged into the universe and whatever we want, we can have. So that's another sense thing. Grace. There's a sense of grace that comes over us, right? And that's another thing that I think these coaches and these gurus really mess up, mess people up with. And they messed me up for a long time because I had one of them say to me, oh, you have to be grateful and you have to have gratitude for everything, including all of the crap in your life. And so it didn't work for me. And I kept going, why isn't this working for me? And then I was like, you know what? I don't have to be grateful for all the crap in my life. I can be grateful for these other things and I can have a, a you know, gratitude that, you know, I want to make this 50,000 a month so that I can have, right, the resources to give back to people and do these things. And I can be grateful for what that would allow me to do. I can have, I can build that into, you know, hey, wouldn't this be great? Because then I could, I don't know, Amira, we could do all kinds of stuff with 50,000 a month. I, I mean, know. I we know. wouldn't spend it all on charity because I'd have to live, but you know, well, and I think the coaches and the gurus, they really mess people up because they're like, you have to do gratitude in this way. First of all, I, I, you know, I've been doing this for 24 years before they invented coaching. I mean, they had sports coaches, you know, high school coaches, but the point of it is, is there's a lot of programs that just pump out materials and they just memorize it. There's another part of the process of integrating it and recognizing how it can be applied, right? And, and that gratitude is a frequency that we even hear about in our churches, right? That talk about feeling grateful. So I think there, it could be better framed where like, okay, so, you know, I had some shitty experiences. How can I use that to shift and make something different? How can I be grateful that I had that experience and now I can shift out of it? How would I like to see it different? And I think that part of that experience would be almost akin to releasing Oh, I agree, but that's not how they frame it. Which is, it, and like I said, it messed me up for quite a while. And then, and then I had a moment where, you know, I was sitting with it in a, in a particular painful moment with this particular coach, and I, I thought about it, and I went, you know, this is all crap. I don't have to do any of this this way. I can, I can go off and do it this way, which was more closely aligned with what you were just talking about, where it's like, yeah, I had this shitty experience. It's great to shift out of it. And now, what do I want? To reframe all of this with um but it was very disappointing and so it's funny to be talking about gratitude with you because i think that people i don't know if they misunderstand it or they just learned it wrong or you know i feel that way about forgiveness too you know people talk about forgiveness forgiveness to me means i can think about the people who hurt me with an open heart and without wishing them ill will or feeling that hurt you know it doesn't it doesn't mean to me that i let you stab me in the back 10 times you know um it's like all right you're you're over here now you know I, I kind of like say you know god bless you and keep you far away from me you know like i wish you a long life prosperity but just just do it somewhere else and i think that people they get forgiveness as like a oh well you forgive this person and they're back in your life and they have more opportunities to negatively impact you yeah to step on your face yeah um, and but you see you haven't done anything different you haven't learned from the experience and i think that's that's part of growing I think, you know, we've all got to have these shitty experiences because they are actually, I, you know, hate as much as we hate them, they're the things that actually mold us, mold our character, you know, and so we get to shift. I, I've got lots of clients who prefer not to shift. They want to stay stuck. 
right? So you have to show up. You have to say, yeah, I'm ready to let go. Yeah. I'm ready to shift something. Now, maybe you have to shift something else before that thing can shift. You know, when you're stuck in depression, I remember when my good friend JR passed away, as much as I talked to dead people and no spirit exists, I was pissed. I was pissed because we had a meeting planned, right? And so I know it's shallow. It's really stupid. And I, but I, you know, that hurt loss, that pain. Yes, I was feeling selfish because I had some things that, yeah, I was putting me first. It, it took a little while of me massaging the energy of feeling grateful that he actually left because he was suffering. And so there's, there was a process of, was I holding on to him? And that was kind of a selfish energy because I needed his energy and his support. But in him leaving, I was actually able to shift in ways that I couldn't see. And I'm grateful for that now. It took some time. So it's, it, you know, as you're shifting your perspective of even the way we see ourselves, right? The way you see yourself then that just opens up more doors and takes you on, uh, you know, keeps you on a path. Wow, look at this. Oh, I never thought that could happen. And the yeah. more we raise our vibration and to open ourselves to possibilities, the more it comes in, right? But we have to be willing to first let go, shift. What's not working, who we think we are. And I was talking to a lady just the other day and we had a session and she goes, I'm really anxious, Samira. It was her first experience with me. And I said, well, what's that about? She goes, well, I'm just not sure what to expect. And I said, well, let's throw that out the window. Like, what if you just felt amazing? Let's replace that. I'm anxious because I don't know what's going to come with what would I like to create? I think like, this will be the most amazing thing that ever happened to you. Yeah. And, and see, but that's what I did with the manifesting challenge, right? I just kind of went, okay, I'm just going to, whatever it is, is going to come in. It's just, it's coming in and I'm just, you know, I need to, I need to just let it, let it happen and, and get out of its way. And I, I think, you know, I used to tell my coaching clients, you know, all the time, I used to tell them there's lies we tell ourselves, lies, other tell lies, other people tell us and lies we tell other people. And see, she's lying to herself. You know, I'm anxious because I don't know what to expect. And people, they think about letting go. Like I said, they think about letting go as- this but that's a program. Passive. Her lie to herself was a program. Yes. She had done it so many times. She didn't realize she couldn't see it because she's in it, right? And so that's what happens is we're blinded. And what I found happened to myself a lot was the lies I tell myself, or I shouldn't say the lies I used to tell myself, but we all still lie to ourselves. So the lies I tell myself though, they have sometimes started as lies other people told me when I, like maybe when I was a child or, or, or some other aspect, it started as a lie that somebody told me. And then it becomes a lie I tell myself because I take it on. And then it becomes a lie I tell other people because then, right, it becomes this program. And then, then, I, then I say to you, you, oh, well, this, and it's not even a true statement. It's all this we, weaved web of lies perceptions beliefs notions concepts whatever yeah it's yeah, a mess exactly right. it's a mess <laughs> yeah, so yeah. we tell ourselves right they, they, that becomes you know another program so um as you're stepping more into your one incredible thing what are you noticing shift on a daily basis with your practice so as I said, the, the main shift is I'm trying to really trying just relax. Sometimes I do catch myself and I have to interrupt it. So okay. yes, trying, because sometimes I have to interrupt it because you're start practicing, to you're practicing interrupting a pattern. Right, right. Sometimes I have to go, you know, uh, sometimes I don't have to interrupt the pattern and I have to interrupt it less, but, but yes, it's a, it's a, it's a trial and error for me. But you're kidding yourself. You see, this is the point. It's a practice. We're not 100% going to get it right out of the chute. Yeah, and because awesome. we're so blinded with our patterns and we're in our own little world, our own little bubble, we don't catch it. So catching it is a huge deal. I really want to yeah. congratulate you on that. And I've, and I've also noticed what's, what's funny this time around is, you know, you always say to me, how are you sleeping? And um, 
So what's funny is, you know, I have these dreams where I'm like time traveling or whatever it is that I'm doing, where I'm, I'm doing these weird things. And I've noticed that some of these practices, they show up. I'm on that platform going up and coming down and all this. And I'm like, wait, I did this before earlier today. And it's, it's very funny because I'm not playing it before I go to bed. But I've noticed that some of these things are like showing up at that time period. So Rebecca, you're cheating. Am I? I don't know. You're, you're already cheating because you're already doing my mentoring training, oh. my mastery oh. training without being plugged <laughs> into it. Okay. So here's what's happening is um, we're working on the unconscious level and that there's a part of ourselves that I call the astral body and that astral body, your spirit, your, your spiritual energy body is actually where you're going when you're dreaming that's the vehicle the body that you take and so you're integrating this on other levels and it's now connecting with your conscious mind the spirit actually learns and does all of this before the physical body so unbeknownst to you your spirit's doing it and now it's downloading to this the physical body you think it's the other way around i know but it's actually reversed to that. And the fact that you're doing it in the spirit world is incredibly powerful because here's what, and that you have a conscious awareness of it because when we leave this physical body, when we drop it, when we finally leave this earth plane, that consciousness is what you're taking with you. That's the investment. And I know for us that we're just worried about our one incredible thing and having some money in the bank or doing our next program or whatever that might be. Um, it seems like so stupid, but it's really very, very, very big deal. We're working at a very deep level and I don't often talk about that. I'm trying to keep this whole program simple, but that's what's really going on. And when we step into the mastery training, this goes so much deeper that you just become a manifesting magnet like you just can't imagine. I have to make everything complicated, Amira. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oh boy, I, you know, you're kind of like a match to me because I've done, I've done my fair share of making it complicated. And really it's like stepping back, stepping back and just asking the question, well, if it was different, how could it be, you know? And you know, giving, I, are you giving yourself more time to meditate? Because I know that was a struggle for you at one point. You just didn't, you were hit and miss. It wasn't a yeah, job too, so. Yeah, I don't know, because I'm not really tracking the amount of time I'm giving it, but it's, it's, but it's like I said, it's also happening. So I, you know what, I guess, yes, now that I'm talking to you, because it's happening also, like, when I'm going to bed, and I'm not playing it. So I, I guess it's like, yeah, it's just, I don't know how to answer that question. Are, are you committed to doing it every day to yourself? Have you committed it to, to doing it, the practice every day, our practice? Yes, that I have done. So there is, that's a big, that's a big shift. You're giving that to yourself and look what's happening. That's amazing. <laughs> it's really so simple. I have to run. I know we have you have 15 minutes left in here. I have to run. I have to okay. get to other That's things. Fine. That's fine. I really, really appreciate it. It was so lovely to connect with you today. Thanks for um, being vulnerable, sharing your magic and your miracles and your wisdom. I really appreciate it. You're and welcome. What's that? I said, you're welcome. Here's the, thank you. And I sure hope everybody that's listening to this after the replay that you're motivated to practice, plug into your one incredible thing, practice and uh, share what you're noticing because we'd love to hear it and see you tomorrow. Same I, hope time. Some, I hope some other people will jump in here. Yes, me too. They will. And regardless, if we're showing up, that's sending a vibration out to everybody to have it. So whether they can or can't, it's okay. Um, the weekends might be a little busier because we've got, you know, people can't use work as an excuse, right? Yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah. But this weekend is a big weekend because, you know, uh, this is the weekend that um, in Judaism, they, we start uh, slik slikot because we're welcoming the high holidays because, you know, Rosh Hashanah comes in on the eve of the 25th. So there's okay. a lot of stuff going on. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, but we can still be here. 
I will talk to you okay. later, my friend. Okay. Have a magical day. Have a magical day. It was great seeing you. Bye-bye.